I saw really early on, I was watching these dubbed uh, press conferences from their health minister and all kinds of just weird, nerdy stuff that I was doing. <laughs> Your wife's like, yeah. I know, <laughs> she's just like, again. what? She'll here come she home and see me watching like... this stuff. She's like, you're such a nerd. Yeah, she's like, here he goes again. <laughs> yeah, so what they, the data showed that 88% of the folks that were having severe symptoms had at least one pre-existing chronic disease. And I was just like, th their bodies, this, this virus appears to have a tropism towards lung tissue, but we knew, now we know it's more epithelial, more cardiovascular, uh, but basically it's a hyperinflammatory triggering condition. And I want folks to realize that the virus doesn't do it itself. It's your body's response to the virus. Your body creates the inflammation. A virus can't create inflammation. Mm. A virus is in an, it's not even alive necessarily. It's such a weird thing. We can get into that maybe, but you know what it does is your body, it begins to basically, the quote infection is the virus taking control of your cellular machinery and then printing out copies of itself, printing out copies of infected cells. Mm. It's really fascinating. Matrix vibes. Yeah, yeah. Agent Mr. Smith. Vibes. Yeah, Agent Smith, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Yes. yes. <laughs> there you go. And so it's setting off this immune response where your your system is it knows like, hey, there's this abnormality mm -hmm. taking place, it's sending the guns, and that's where the inflammation comes from. And so we get into this place, is the inflammation controlled? Is it appropriate? Or do we have this newly dubbed cytokine storm taking place? Mm. Right? Or because is it, inflammation is good, is like a yeah. good sign. Yeah, that, without inflammation, we die. Right. Okay. But okay. chronic is but bad. chronic is bad. Yes, if it's if it's chronic, and even in the moment, it can be an acute inflammation that goes too far. Got it. Right. Okay. But or it can under respond. Right. So we want to look towards like what are some immunomodulators, and maybe we can circle back to that as well. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I know that okay, obesity. If we're in a state of obesity. This is a pre-inflamed state. Like mm -hmm. literally your fat cells, which we think again, going back to what we were originally talking about, if we're targeting these fat cells, we wanna burn fat, we wanna kill the fat. That's not how it really works because your fat cells, like when you're born, you have a certain amount of fat cells. They just get filled with contents or the contents get emptied, right? And so as the contents of the cell, and a fat cell can literally have like a thousand times its size, it can grow. It's crazy what, it's so intelligent and incredible. But as that fat cell begins to contain a lot of storage, there's an immune, there's a, an immune signal that takes place. And basically it's signaling to your body that you're infected. Like your fat cells are sending off this data as if you're infected. And so it's creating this pre-inflamed state. And then this inf inflammatory driven condition hits you. What do you mm. think's gonna happen? You know, this mm -hmm. is very basic stuff. So I saw the data and I was like, we're in trouble here. We're here. We are the sickest nation in the history of the world. Like, and so I just was just like, okay, this is our time. This is our moment. We've all been training for this people. Uh -huh. This is our mm -hmm. moment. We've got to focus on community wellness. We've got to get our citizens healthier. And so I, I focused on that, shared the early evidence. And I saw something interesting happen. I've never seen before. And at that time, 19 years in this field, there was this extreme cognitive dissonance. There was this shift that took place where folks immediately allowed a certain narrative to integrate and they start to see the world very differently. Where this logical, applicable data, like we've got thousands of thousands of peer reviewed studies on here's some things that we can do to actually have an appropriate immune response to fortify your natural killer cells, which the FDA even was working to fast track a drug targeting our NK cells because they're so effective at killing SARS-CoV-2 infected cells. All these things that we already have, but now it's just like, if you don't separate, you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. If you don't shut your business down, if you, if you don't wear a mask, whatever the case might be, we started doing all these new things we've never done before. Mm. And I was just like, what? okay, that's okay. We can have those things, but we've got to do these, these things we know work. We know these things work. Why are we not talking about these things? And so, you know, friends and, friends and colleagues, you know, people that I've supported, that I love, they were like, you know, same, they were like, you're absolutely right, Sean. Because I knew obesity was going to be the big issue. Mm -hmm. 
They're like, you're absolutely right, Sean. Unfortunately, we can't get people healthier overnight, right? This was the story. And now here we are almost two years later and they're, they're still not talking about this. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was seeing that this cognitive dissonance was taking place. And by the way, so just to be clear, the CDC published a report. As of this recording, it was last month. And it was data from over 800 U.S. hospitals. So as of this recording, it was two months ago. They took the data from over 800 U.S. hospitals, over 540,000 COVID-19 patients. And they found that the number one risk factor for death from COVID was obesity. I was fucking right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be right. It's just obvious. Mm -hmm. The number one risk factor. The second leading risk factor, though, which is something I immediately, I was like, okay, this, this cognitive dissonance is, why would, why would this break happen in our psychology? It's because we're afraid. Mm -hmm. And we were just being inundated with irrational fear. Not, we can have safety, we can be logical, because we know this about like yelling fire, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, the, when the something is on fire and creating a riot, basically. But it's happening psychologically for people. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking at what is, what is the impact of rampant fear having on the immune system? Because I know this is what I've been studying. A, a big part of my work the last decade has been psychoneuroimmunology and psychoneuroendocrinology. Mm -hmm. And so knowing how fear can literally destroy your immune system. And so I sought out other voices as well because I'm this cool science guy you know like I want to make sure I bring in a multitude of voices and so I went to leading cell biologist the term epigenetics that a lot of people have heard he's the guy who impressed it upon our culture Dr. Bruce Lipton he's the guy I got him sat down with him and I asked him to talk about the biology of fear how does this actually influence our immune system and man he broke it down you know and in short We'll just say this immediate cortisol response is good. Like we actually get an immune boost if it's a short-term fear, right? In case you've got to heal like a cut or something because your psychology is like prepared for some kind of external intrusion. That's what mm -hmm. our fear response is for, is for handling fight or flight, right? Today, we're not facing off against pandas in the wild. I don't know if anybody's ever faced a panda in the wild. <laughs> They'd be but, like, nice. <laughs> That'd be great. You know, wild bears or, yes. you know, everybody uses saber-toothed tiger. I want to do something different. But we don't face <laughs> off on those type of scenarios anymore. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of creature comforts now. So we have time to manufacture fear. Yes. And your brain and biology does not know the difference. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.